Ambassador Ivo Dalda, thanks so much for joining me on the show this evening to discuss the Libyan war. Ten years on, you were one of the key voices behind it as U.S. ambassador to NATO at the time. A decade later, do you still think it was the right thing to do? I think the right thing was for uh, the United States, together with its allies through NATO, to use military force to protect civilians who, at the time of the intervention, were being attacked mercilessly by uh, Colonel Gaddafi's forces and the military regime. The, at, the, the idea of using force to protect civilians who are being attacked by their own government is something that I think was the right thing to do then and continue to think uh, was uh, the right thing to do uh, now. However, of course, things change and, and uh, we can look at uh, the longer term, the longer term, uh, the people of Libya have suffered even without uh, Colonel Gaddafi there. Uh, and we have to make an assessment on the relative balance between our intervention and our non-intervention and what yes. would have happened uh, had we not done so. So on that note, you've called the intervention repeatedly over the last decade. Uh, it's a phrase that jumped out at me when I was preparing for this interview. You called it a model intervention. And I have to ask, Ambassador, what is it about the unending civil war there, the rise of militias and gangs, the rise of ISIS, human traffickers, refugees and displaced people, slave markets, mass killings, torture, the halving of per capita income over the past decade, the general instability in that region from the get-go. What, what is it about all of that that makes it a model intervention in your view? I think that's a very fair question. Do recall that the, uh, that the, the piece that you mentioned was, uh, was published in early 2012, shortly after the invention. And the focus of that piece, which I co-authored with uh, uh, the then U.S. commander of U.S. forces in, in Europe and, of course, the NATO yes. Supreme Allied Commander, Jim Stavridis, was how should the United States and its allies intervene when it comes to the relative distribution of capabilities? Here was an intervention that was led by, uh, argued for, and, and, and the case was made for, particularly uh, by France and, and Great Britain, uh, but many other countries in Europe as well. And the question was, what should the United States do in, in support of that? Uh, this was, uh, in many ways, a, a European-led intervention. Uh, 90% of all the bombs that were dropped were dropped from European aircraft. And the American contribution was to enable that uh, intervention. That's the way in which we talked about a model intervention, number one. Number two, as I mentioned, uh, there is this fundamental question of uh, who has the responsibility to protect the citizens of a country that are being attacked by their own government. Back in 2000, the UN Security Council uh, adopted the idea of a responsibility to protect. The idea that if a nation fails or the state fails uh, to protect its civilians, the international community has an obligation uh, to intervene. And indeed, that is what happened in this case, probably the first and maybe perhaps the last case in which the international community uh, through the UN, and this was a UN authorized operation, uh, came in in order but, to protect the but, but What has happened since, just, of course, is, is problematical, as everyone who has been part of this operation has recognized. I feel like problematic is an understatement. I just want to be clear here. Are you saying now, with the benefit of hindsight, you don't believe it was a model intervention? Because your old boss, President Obama, the man who launched uh, that war on, on the part of the United States, at least, he's on record uh, saying Libya is a mess. It, quote, didn't work as an intervention, his words, and it was his worst mistake. Yeah, so the worst mistake was not uh, his actually intervening. The worst mistake was not seeing it through uh, from, from his perspective. And he's, uh, he's argued that the international community writ large, and particularly the Europeans uh, who have been pushing for this intervention, should have done much more uh, to help stabilize the situation after the intervention. I would also note that I thought that the intervention went on too long. Uh, I was uh, on the record internally, uh, less so externally, that at the moment that uh, Gaddafi had lost control of Tripoli, uh, that was the right moment for uh, the United States, for NATO, for the United Nations to say, we have accomplished our objectives. The military is no longer capable of attacking the civilians who are there. And that ultimately what was, what was this, uh, this intervention was about. It was a protecting civilians against a military regime that was attacking their people. And tens of thousands would have, so, hundreds of thousands so, would have died, but for that intervention.
And it is, it is easy well, to look at well, what happened after the intervention, but it's also important to look at what would have happened without that intervention. Excuse me. I appreciate arguments that involve counterfactuals. They're fair. I'm not dismissing them. But of course, we do know what did happen, and tens of thousands of people did die also as a result of that war. And who knows how many have died over the past decade. And just on the subject of humanitarian intervention, you mentioned it a couple of times now, the principle of protecting civilians. You could have just stuck to protecting Benghazi from the Libyan army, as the UN resolution allowed for. You didn't have to go and take out the regime, take out Gaddafi. You didn't have to help rebels find him in the desert, beat him, sodomize him with a bayonet, and then murder him. And just a reminder, Ambassador, this is how your then boss, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, reacted when she heard the news of his death 10 years ago. Have a listen. We came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> anything to do with your visit no I'm, I'm sure it did i mean the nato and the united states were complicit in not just regime change but also the rape and murder of colonel gaddafi were they not uh clearly the military intervention uh, allowed uh, people on the ground to take matters in their own hand and that included uh finding and killing gaddafi in a pretty uh, uh brutal way uh, I uh, have long argued, and I argued, in fact, in the time, that we should have stopped the war in August, uh, well before Gaddafi was killed, uh, because we had accomplished our essential mission, not just in Benghazi, but remember, uh, in other parts of Lib Libya, the, uh, the military that Gaddafi was leading at the time was attacking civilians. He was doing it in, uh, in, in Tripoli. He was doing it in other parts of the country. But once that was over, which it pretty much was by early yeah. August when he was no longer in control, we should have stopped the war. Uh, I, know, I know that's easier said than done. It is always easier to start a war than it is to end it. Uh, and there was yeah. this confluence, which I don't think was the right confluence. And I didn't argue for it, in fact, argued against it uh, internally between regime change and protecting civilians. I think those two are very different things. Uh, um, yes, and, and they, and are, we need they to are very be, different. They should be different. They are very different things. They are very different things. And those of us, people like myself, who are instinctively skeptical, let's put it that way, uh, of US and Western uh, military interventions in the Middle East, at least could see some case for a humanitarian intervention. But we're always worried it would become regime change. We're worried that NATO would become a kind of air force for various rebel groups, including quote unquote jihadist groups. And you look what's happened to Libya over the past 10 years, uh, torn apart by some awful people and awful groups, still in a civil war, still politically divided, multiple governments, outside powers arming different factions. The U.S. supported one side of the conflict. Uh, another side is currently led by a man named General Khalifa Haftar, who has hired former U.S. officials and lawmakers to lobby for him right now in Washington, D.C. So what should the U.S. do right now under Joe Biden, Ambassador? Take a side, just make sure elections happen in December, push for foreign forces to get out of, out of Libya. I mean, our Gulf allies are arming all of the sides. Yeah, uh, I mean, in, it's, it's a complicated situation in Libya. Just, just a, one more time on the counterfactual, because I do think it's important. Because what what happened in Libya, the decision was made not to intervene in Syria. And there was no intervention in Syria, and there was no American or Air Force being bombing all over the place. Yes, there was some protection when ISIS uh, came in uh, in a very limited way. Um, but in Syria, we did not intervene. And they, that, that did not prevent tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, uh, indeed, from being killed and millions from being uh, uh, displaced. Here's the problem. When we intervene, something uh, bad often happens. When we don't intervene, something bad often happens. And so balancing how you intervene yeah. at what point in the situation is a complicated task. The same is true right now when it comes to what we do in Libya. I do think that the United States and its allies continue to have a special moral obligation to try to find a way in which the Libyan people can determine their own future in peace uh, rather than through conflict. And uh, being involved in order to find a way to a new government uh, through the elections if necessary, uh, if, if those uh, can be held in, in a yeah. peaceful and yeah. sustainable way, is the kind of thing we should do. And indeed, the Biden administration has Just sent some of its most senior people into Libya in order to help that process going. That's what we should do. We should also provide uh, the economic and other aid that is necessary yes. in support of a peaceful uh, a peaceful site. I don't think we should be be, be just, 
uh, choosing sides uh, uh, in, in a conflict that clearly is uh, upsetting various parts of the Middle East uh, against each other. I think what we should uh, do is what we tried okay. to do back in 2011, choose the, part, the side of the uh, Libyan people against those who are interested in killing them. We're almost out of time, so I'm sorry to jump in. I did have one last question I wanted to ask you, and I just want to put on the record, in Syria, you're right, we didn't uh, invade or carry out multiple airstrikes or regime change, but we did intervene by supporting certain rebel groups, but that's an argument for another day. Uh, one last quick question. At what point do we learn lessons from our alliances and from our wars? Because we helped arm a bunch of Mujahideen in Afghanistan against the Soviet Union and then ended up spending the past 20 years bombing some of them. We armed Saddam Hussein against Iran and then bombed him. We even became friends with Gaddafi for a while. Hillary Clinton hosted his son at the State Department. In 2009, we signed off on hundreds of thousands of dollars of military equipment sales. And then we bombed him too. We have a pretty poor record here, don't we, Ambassador? Yeah, and I think we don't learn lessons very well. And I think Libya is one of them. Uh, and in, fa in fact, this very conversation uh, about when do we intervene, how do we intervene, when do we not intervene, and when we do intervene, when do we halt and stop, and what is the responsibility for what happens afterwards, is a lesson which we, we only learn by doing it again over and over again. There's very little conversation being done in the halls of Congress, uh, in fact, none in the halls of Congress, yeah. where Benghazi, all that nonsense took over. Uh, uh, yes. and uh, but there's also really not a, a lot of good analysis happening in the State Department or in, or, or in the Defense Department on these kinds of interventions and, and the lessons that we learned. And that leads people to say, if we don't know how to do it well, maybe we shouldn't do it at all. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.